to see what you need to see that will help you become a better Christian. Let the power of God open your ears to hear the words that will help you become a better Christian. Let your mind, ask the Holy Spirit that your mind may possess the truth of the kingdom of God that will redefine you for the next season of your assignment. Pray and ask God for the grace to act in keeping with the things that you hear this, mo this morning. Let the grace of the Lord rest upon you. Let the teaching that you will hear this morning help you to become a better Christian. Tell the Lord that he may recognize your presence. When he recognizes your presence, he can grant you an encounter with the spoken word. And once that encounter comes, your life is being redefined to become a grace and a sign and a, a blessing to your generation. Holy Spirit, we lean upon your help this morning and this afternoon that we may receive your word with power and clarity. Grant us a grace to receive this word and it may reshape our lives. Grant us an encounter with your spoken word. And that may this word bless our lives true and true. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I will ask us to remain standing while the, our elderly ones please be seated. Our grandfathers, grandmothers, our elderly ones, senior citizens, please be seated while others remain standing. As a sign of honor, brothers and sisters, I want us at this time, all the mamas, please sit down, sit. I want us at this time, brothers and sisters, to please put our hands together for them as a sign of honor to recognize the grace and the age, the hard work, their labor in the faith. Recognize them is a sign of honor. This parish is a parish of honor. We honor those who have done well and we honor those who continue to give their best to the things of God. We appreciate you, our dear fathers, our dear mothers. We pray that the Lord may grant you the grace of perseverance and grant you the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. May be seated now, brothers and sisters. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. This morning, very briefly, my homely shall be, I have teamed the message to be the call to a life of sharing. The call to a life of sharing. Friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, as we celebrate the fourth edition, this is the fourth edition of the World Day for Grandparents and the Elderly today. It impresses upon our souls, brothers and sisters, this truth that this celebration continues to remind us that the presence of the elderly as well as our grandparents do the following in our lives. Number one, that pre their presence enrich our lives as a parish community. Any parish or any, any community that lacks the presence of the elderly, there is something truly missing in that community. So their presence enriches the lives of the community. Your presence, their fathers, their mothers, their elderly ones, reminds us of the gift of years and the experience and stamina through these years in following the Lord. And of course, your achievement amid and the accomplishment in your individual lives, it helps us to cherish that hard work and right living brings abundance of blessings. So each time we look at you, we look at the years of labor. We look at the years of sacrifice. We look at the, the years of totally surrendering to God. It gives us the reason to trust God and to depend on Him. It reminds us that there is a huge reward in the evening of life. This is the evening of life that you have attained at this time. You are in the evening of life. It is, we say thank you to you for your sacrifices in the past years we thank you for laboring the spirit we thank you for trusting in god your faith reassures us that god is still with us and we pray at this time that god will grant you the grace of final perseverance and grant you the gift of eternal life in the name of jesus number two we also want to remind you that attending to you is not only a sign of gratitude and affection 
but a necessity in the construction of a human and fraternal society that all the attention we give to you is not a burden to us it's a sign of gratitude it's a sign of an affection it's a sign of honor for all that you have done in the past number three the holy father pope francis invites us to recognize your inestimable value and to do so not only occasionally but permanently as a worshiping community that in the fiber and the nucleus of our activities as a parish we must always remember you remember to celebrate you we are not celebrating number four we are not celebrating an anniversary once a year but we are celebrating you today because you are you form an integral part of our christian families you also form an integral part of our common history of faith and love and life we appreciate you so much more than you can ever imagine we appreciate you and we love you we thank you and we say may god bless you in the name of jesus the holy father calls our attention to the fact that you must be taken seriously and the church must give you appropriate pastoral attention and this is what we do every sunday by bringing to you the food of angels which is the body of christ we bring it to you every sunday whether we are busy or we are not busy at least one of us must always come to you to tell you that we still love you and that christ still cares about you and we administer to you the body of christ which is the food of angels the strength for the spiritual journey that it will become a feeling apart not to bring the body of Christ to you every every week the thing for this year is do not cast me off in my old age Psalm 71 verse 9 Psalm 71 verse 9 says do not cast me off in my old age now it is a heartfelt plea to the Lord that he should not abandon you in this time of your frailty it should not abandon you. I was discussing with one of the elderly yesterday after the Saturday prayers and he said to himself that he has discovered that once he eats, immediately, within two hours, the food vanishes. He has begin to ask himself, where does this food go to? This is a sign of age. But their fathers, their mothers are their senior citizens. In this age that you have attained, this evening of life, there is a feeling of becoming lonely. It is a feeling of saying to yourself, after all this, Lord, is this how you have kept me? Some brothers and sisters will say that this loneliness is a bitter pill to chew because everyone needs companionship. But due to the numerous contingent situations, such as the migration of your children from your home, either to the to, to, to other parts of the world, to the other parts of the country, the crisis within the family, or due to some individualistic mentality that makes you feel lonely, that, that you are like a body. Their fathers, their mothers, you are not a body. You once cared for us. It's also our time to pay you back to us to care for you, to tell you that we cherish you and we appreciate you. It is true that sometimes there's this habit that lies within the young ones of which they feel and say to themselves that that point comes a time in the life of an individual when he wants to be alone. And so leave us alone, let us do our own thing. This is not what it should be. It is a result of a wrong choice and a wrong attitude and a wrong mentality. This time is a time we must be close to you, our very elderly ones, in order to learn from the wisdom of the age that you have attained. Their fathers, their mothers, the Holy Father reminds us never to abandon our elderly ones. For God never abandons his children. Not even when strength wins or life seems less productive. God is still with you. The word of God reminds us that growing old is a sign of blessing. It's a sign of blessing, not a cause. Now when we see gray hair, it's a sign of God's blessings. And that is what the word of God reminds us in Ruth chapter 4 verse 15. He says, He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons has born to him. Job chapter 12 verse 12 says, Wisdom is with the aged and understanding in length of days. 
there is wisdom in you and we must tap into it loneliness their fathers their mothers and abandonment of the elderly is not inevitable it must surely come it must surely come but what do you do when in this particular state that you have attained we can learn from these particular wonderful lessons from Naomi and Ruth that Ruth did not abandon her mother-in-law from this story of Ruth and Naomi we can learn four lessons as well as from the gospel passage today as well as the first reading of today's liturgy number one lesson that we can learn is what we can learn love and loyalty as far as we know brothers and sisters Ruth had never been outside of Moab before deciding to follow her mother-in-law Naomi back to Judah now we can sympathize with Oprah the Oprah was the sister-in-law who eventually turned back to return to her own parents now in Ruth chapter 1 verse 15 Naomi said to Ruth behold your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her God return after your sister-in-law Ruth refuses and amazingly she says in Ruth chapter 1 verse 16 to 17 he says do not urge me to leave you or to turn back from following you for where you go I will go and where you lodge I will lodge your people shall be my people and your God my God where you die I will die and there I will be buried thus may the Lord do to me and worse if anything but death part you and me because of the experience that she had with what Ruth because she had this good experience with Naomi and she said I will never let you go your blessings I will continue to be with you. The good things I have stayed, I have learned from you. I will continue to learn them. Your God shall be my God. Your everything you do shall also be mine because of the blessings that she has received from Naomi. Brothers and sisters, we can also learn God's provisions. In the midst of scarcity, God still provides. In the first reading, we can learn that even though the servant of Elisha came to him and said the bread will not be enough he spoke confidently and he said to him that for so long as the Lord has said so give the men the bread to eat and let us go to the scripture he says give them to the men that they may eat for thus says the Lord they shall eat and have some left so he set it before them and they ate and had some left according to the word of God the third lesson we can learn is the audacity of your faith the audacity of your faith that you are confident to pronounce the name of the Lord God provides God never abandons his own the Bible tells us now that I am old I have never seen the righteous man ever in need or his children begging for bread now is the time to recline on God and hold him so firmly never to abandon God continue to trust in God continue to trust in God continue to believe in him continue to surrender yourself to him even at this time it's also in the fact in the gospel reading we come to see that the young boy provided he provided five loaves of bread and two fish Jesus stepped into the scene he was feeding the crowd and having finished feeding the crowd by teaching them the word of God and discovered they were hungry he inquired of Philip let us provide something for them this is an invitation to share in the life of grace but Philip saw the impossibility but Andrew made a little attempt by also stepping into the, 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 the dimension of God and as a step into the dimension of God the Lord opened his eye to locate a young boy with five loaves of bread and two fish and then he said what is that to so many and the only word that Jesus said was that word let the people sit down so he tells you that this age is a time to sit down and continue to enrich the young ones with what the word of God number two lesson that you can learn from this is that Jesus gave thanks when the anxiety of youthful age sets in your presence creates clarity and stamina and provides us the reassurance that God is still with us that God is still there and what did Jesus do Jesus gave thanks to God 
Jesus gave thanks. So every time we give thanks to God, God, God steps in to do the unimaginable. The God you serve is a God of possibilities. Is a God who provides, is a God who makes his power felt even in the midst of weakness. Their fathers, their mothers, this time is a time for you to hold on to God. It's a time for you to thank God for everything he has done for you. It's a time to thank God for your children. It's a time to thank God for even your health. Thank him. Because when you sit down, now, as young ones, we are always in a judge. We want to do it and accomplish a lot of things. But you, you have seen it all. And you have seen there is no need to be what? Frenetic. There's a time for us to sit down and calculate. Because when you sit down, you can see clearly. So sitting down means you can see the mighty works of the Lord. It is our prayer today that the Lord in his mercy will bless you more than you can ever imagine give you the strength to continue to rely on him, to depend on him true and true in the mighty name of Jesus. This age is also the last lesson we learn from Ruth and Naomi is a time for redemption. God redeems. God restores. God blesses. God continues to uphold. Never let go of the hand of the Lord. If you let go of the hand of the Lord, what will your children do? Your presence creates the stability in the faith life that they see you praying your rosary that they see you always either watching a good channel a godly channel is a reminder to the young ones that the only thing that can redeem this age is what god outside of god there is confusion now many people today are afraid why are we afraid because of what is happening in our country nigeria and so the young ones are saying they want to carry out a protest. And then this protest has dire consequences whether we look at it from the positive angle or from the negative angle. This particular protest is to let us know that the elderly who are actually ruling the country have not done right. And because of their failure, we have plunged into what? The abyss of what? Darkness. But there is redemption for us. This is the reason why Jesus has come. There is a redemption for us. This is why the church stands. There is a redemption for us because we have still in this country, we have good fathers and good mothers. We still have the elderly who are filled with the spirit of the Lord, who are filled with the fear of the Lord, who are filled with that grace. This is why we are celebrating you today, that you can show us there is still a redemption coming for Nigeria. You have experienced war. You have experienced even starvation, hunger. The apathy, you have experienced a lot of things. Your presence sends to guide us and give, provide this caution to us. But we only pray that the young ones will only listen. That the Lord will open the ears of our, of our leaders. And that they may chart a good cause for our country, Nigeria, in the name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we must celebrate our elderly ones because we are celebrating the good ones. We're only praying for those who have actually gone awa, that God may redeem them and bring them to right knowledge and right thinking through Christ our Lord. Please, I want you to say louder, Amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, we know very well that our country, Nigeria, today is not experiencing the best of all times. Why? Because most of the elderly have set a bad precedence. And the teeth of the young ones are set on the edge. Now today, many are leaving the shores of our country, Nigeria, able-bodied men, because of the failure of the elderly. But then, we thank God for the good ones. We thank God for the life of the good ones. And you find, we factor you within the ambient and, the, and, and that particular space where we celebrate the good ones. And that is why we stood up to applaud you. Please, once again, I ask you to please, while you are seated, please put your hands together for these our wonderful fathers and mothers. Clap for them. God is so wonderful. There are prayers alone for us, gives us strength. There are presence alone. Help, help, helps us to understand that if we choose right we can experience peace if we choose wrong we experience evil 
we appreciate you fathers we appreciate you mothers even our dear fathers fully in online may god bless you may god reward you through christ our lord finally what is expected of us today we are called to be like the, the boy who offered the five loaves of bread and two fish we are all of us are called god is calling and inviting everyone to be able to offer himself as a sign of hope to bring about good change in our country and this is what we find the gift of the priesthood our brother was ordained some days ago the 6th of july to add to the number of the men of god who will preach the word of god fearlessly we are praying that he will not burn out on this journey we are praying that he will stand to speak the truth to the crowd that his life will be a reflection of god's glory in the name of jesus dear father we celebrate you today but know that is as we are celebrating today when you begin your ministry not all will like you especially when you begin to speak the truth not all will appreciate you but i was reading this book on by robin warren and he was saying something about the heart of the steward the heart of the servant of god the heart of the servant of God is that in the midst of the crisis, criticisms and everything, return to the Lord and submit everything to him. When you place everything at his feet, he knows how to arrange everything. Every difficulty you will encounter on the road, may God give you the power to overcome in the name of Jesus. Surely you will to come. It's not going to be a bed of roses. But even when these challenges come, may he give you the wisdom the intelligence to override and bring the people of God to safety as the Lord wills that we bring all his flock to safety through Christ our Lord. For you brothers and sisters, it is a time for you to also share. And how are we to share? Number one, our visit to the elderly with gifts, with words of encouragement offers a beacon of light, a beacon of hope to them. When they call to you that they want to speak to you, offer to them your ears. They want to say something. Be patient enough to hear them. Number two, we must be involved, we must involve them in the parish activities in such a way that they feel continually feel part of this community. Number three, we must listen to their stories. Learn to listen to their stories and their testimonies of faith. Sometimes they might repeat one story for a over and over again. Be patient, enjoy it, enjoy it. There is lesson, there is wisdom in the repetition of what they are saying to you. Learn it. And finally, we can form the bond of friendship with them. Now this bond of friendship that we form to them reassures them that to be someone who has advanced in years is a sign of God's mercy that God can communicate to one generation to another so that there is no generational gap that, that we can share friendship with them we experience peace we experience clarity and you look at Father Onia when you look at Father Onia you will come to see there are signs of wisdom in him what are the signs of wisdom in him because he spent his youthful age with his grandfather and so words of wisdom comes out from him Sometimes when I look at him and I said, you are an old man, you are a young man, you are acting as if you are older than me. Because of what the words of wisdom that comes out from him. And I appreciate him many times. That you never know as you continue to bond with the elderly, there is a transference of possibilities. There is a transference of grace. There is a transference of wisdom upon your life. So that you will never even know when it rests upon you. So that when you begin to engage in interaction with your, your, your mates, you're going to see that you, you, from you comes out words that we filled with power, words filled with wisdom, words filled with grace that can provide solution in the midst of crisis. As we form friendship with our elderly, may God in his mercy continue to uphold the young ones that we will continue to become a sign of hope to other generations through Christ our Lord. And finally, may God bless our elderly ones. May God bless your children. 
May God bless all those who are taking care of you. May God bless our priests. May God bless all our brothers and sisters. May God bless you, dear parishioners, for all that you have done today to celebrate the elderly. May you be rewarded true and true through Christ our Lord. May the Lord, through the intercession of our blessed same mother, hear and answer our prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Bow your heads, meditate on what you have heard. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. With all the nothing. With all the nothing. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you With all the nothing With all the nothing I surrender all to you Everything I give to you with all the nothing, with all the nothing, one more time, I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you, with all the nothing, with all the nothing. May the Lord bless the speakings now and always.